Thank you very much for being here today. Um, I don't know how it goes for you, but 10 years seem to have gone pretty fast. Uh, to celebrate this wonderful sculpture and the continuing success of the Irish American Archive Society is certainly a shared event and a shared sense of pride. Um, one of the great features of today is that we were able to convince Rowan Gillespie uh, to come and be here to celebrate with us. And we're not going to talk very long, and he never talks long, so that's why I thought I'd make sure I called him up and, and asked him if he might make a few remarks in regard to the anniversary. And you know how much we loved having you here and how much we appreciate what you did for us, but love to hear your own feelings these 10 years on, if you can give us a moment. Well, thank you very much. Can this go up a little bit? Yeah, just, uh, you don't have to, don't just have to do that. There we go. Well, um, but you know, coming back here after 10 years, I suppose the first thing that comes to my mind is how many people who were instrumental in making this whole thing happen are not here today. Uh, and how time has moved on for the ones of us who are still here. Like, that kind of makes me think of the old, you know, life is a bit like a toilet roll. The closer you get to the end, the faster it rolls. <laughs> we, seem to be, we seem to be in the fast roll era. Um, for us fragile people. But actually going over to a bronze sculpture, I'm thinking that Johnny Kilbane sculpture, it's just a big incy wincy bit of its lifetime. That can do a thousand years. That can do two thousand years. It's not going to worry it at all. And so I sort of find myself thinking how important what Margaret and the team of people around her, how important that was because it's people using, people telling the history of Johnny Kilbane with all of the things he did in the past, his phases of life where he made the best of it when he was a child, the best of it when he was a boxer, and then carried on as an older person to still get the best out of life. I feel those people who aren't here with us any longer, they gave up their best in order to leave something behind which will last forever. His popularity will wax and wane, but maybe in a hundred times there'll be researchers who are looking into that and researching it, finding out about Johnny Kilbane. But I hope his main message will be that one, that at every phase in our life, there is something we can offer. As Johnny did, and as your father, mother and father did, that's the, the thing that I'm feeling today, the importance of doing something. Thank you. Thank you, Rowan. And of those who don't know, but I guess most probably do, this stuff doesn't happen without a curious younger person deciding to look into his grandmother's attic, um, the Irish American Archives Society, and telling the story of what Irish Americans have done in Cleveland requires that kind of curiosity and drive. And that w this would not have been possible without the very beginning, which was Kevin O'Toole, the descendant of Johnny Kilbane, finding that 1912 nitrate film and turning to the Cleveland Public Library and the Irish Archive Society and said, what can we do to save the film? How can we celebrate the great centennial of Cleveland's first world champion? And to recognize that, I'd like Kevin O'Toole the young man who found that film to come forward and <laughs> say a few things. Uh, thanks, Tom. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, you know, this is very humbling for us to uh, to have the, the statue. Uh, it's great. I'd like to thank Rowan for coming, um, and obviously for the original uh, artwork that's been so inspiring for all of us. Uh, it's just a great piece of art and something we can all be very proud of. So. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank Margaret and the Irish American Archive Society. Um, 
Mark Grid has done tireless work, not just now, but you know, 10 years ago and 15 years ago to get us to this point. So thank you for all your work. Um, and of course, I want to thank all uh, the family who's here. I have several cousins. Uh, my uncle John, obviously, is unfortunately not able to be here anymore. My father, uh, not really traveling as much anymore. Um, so as Rowan has said, you know, time moves on. Um, but definitely want to thank uh, my cousin John, Patty, they're here, uh, Beth, uh, and Erin, that's uh, she's traveling, so I can't do those But I uh, appreciate everybody coming today, and just uh, thank you. Yeah. You know, uh, public achievements, even when initiated by private parties, like you know, tools and, and the Irish American Archives Society, require leadership and, and help from real important leaders. Some of them are elected officials. Um, some of them are property owners and just care. And this day and this culture would not have happened without Matt Zone, who was the councilman at the time, and his efforts to make this whole neighborhood new and to make this sculpture a part of that park. And, uh, I'd like to ask Matt, and if you can say a few words about the Maroos brothers and their part in making this happen as well. Thank you, Tom. It's uh, real humbling being here uh, for somebody who was born and raised in this neighborhood to see this wonderful gift that was given to our community. Um, I do want to just make acknowledge uh, the amazing work that Margaret Lynch does to make sure that the Irish community is always represented and everything important to Cleveland and, and, and my dear friend Jerry Quinn for your leadership and what you do for our city. So Jerry, I want to just acknowledge both of you, you're both very special people. Um, you're sitting on what was once the site of a Union Carbide facility, a 15 acre campus, it had 28 buildings. Uh, we demolished 27 of the 28. The only one that's still standing is this building right here, the powerhouse with the name and blaze and battery park. Uh, it was a cold fire power plant, so you can imagine the air quality back in the day. It was probably not the best, um, but it energized this whole facility. And a lot of people aren't aware of this story, but the alkaline battery was R&D'd on this campus. And so when we went through the process to um, clean it up and build a community, we wanted Battery Park to be a part of that history. You know, that's all we have as people is, you know, our, 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 our ties to the past with vision towards the future. And that's what Rowan does so beautiful, uh, beautifully as a, as a sculptor. And so when the Maroos Brothers um, took a risk on buying this campus, um, <clears throat> they wanted to make sure that it really represented the community's wishes. And so a third of the campus is green space. You're sitting in a wonderful uh, green space right now. And what I really love about where the sculptures uh, reside, it's just one block north, almost identical to where Johnny Kilbane lived. And if you go on Herman Avenue, Kevin, what's the address? 7413 Herman Avenue. You'll see a bronze uh, uh, plaque out in front there. Uh, marks the home of Johnny Cobain. So when you leave here, go a couple blocks over, 7413 Herman, um, and, and, and take a look at a wonderful Noah Herbeck, uh, his mom uh, founded Near West Theater, lives in the house, and he allowed us to place that plaque in front of his house. Um, I do want to say something, though, about the sculpture and the thoughtful um, attention and detail that was put to it and how the community really came to embrace it and loved it. Um, there are three images of three different men, uh, a young boy, a middle-aged Johnny Cobain, and a senior Johnny Cobain. Uh, some of you may not know this, but I think Kevin was the model for one of the statues in the, your son or grandson? Your son? Uh, what's his name? Patrick. Patrick was one of the models for the, for the young boy. and. Um, John, uh, so I'll let you tell the story because I'm messing it up, but what I love is uh, that um, there's Johnny when he was an immigrant, when he came here, and if you look at the statue, he has no shoes on, and Johnny the successful boxer, and then Johnny the statesman who went on to do great things and had his own leadership. The community really came to embrace that concept. The other thing is 
the stone that those statues sit on, the granite, it was quarried in Ireland. And that was brought over here. So you have statues that were done by a world-class artist, Ron Gillespie, from Ireland. The stone was quarried there. But Ron came to Cleveland because he wanted to meet the people. He wanted to talk to the Irish community. He wanted to make sure that his work really represented the hopes and aspirations, not only of the Kilbane family, but the greater community. And, and uh, you knocked it out of the park. Uh, you certainly did that. And we um, love that. Uh, statue. Um, I send Margaret uh, funny photos every now and then. The, the neighborhood kind of dresses them up. Uh, so when the solstice was here, and, uh, there was a pair of solar glasses on uh, Johnny Kilbane. Um, uh, for St. Patrick's Day, you can often see uh, there will be a green, white, and orange scarf around the neck. And in the season, sometimes somebody will put a, a little a ski cap on the head. And so it's just, I think the community's way of really coming to embrace it and love it. And as you said, Ron, those statues hopefully will be here hundreds of thousands of years. And we just so appreciate you and uh, honor to be a part of this uh, little celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Now, anybody who knows anything about bronze and granite knows that it took some Irish muscle to get it to the spot and to put the work where it needed to be. And on behalf of all those workers, and including the ship people who got it to the port of Cleveland, um, I'd like to introduce and, and have for, for a few remarks, Terry Joyce, easily the finest labor leader in the oh, city God. of Cleveland. Hey, listen, I, I'm, I'm just a world's greatest dot connector, I, I, I believe. So um, just happy to represent the people that actually worked on that at the careful tutelage of, 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 of our sculptor. And if, if you know the characters that were here that day, um, Tommy Chambers, uh, Tommy Conway, uh, oh God, I'm leaving people out, so I better stop there. But, you know, all first generation uh, Americans, Irish Americans. And it didn't, it didn't take a lot of phone calls for me to fly that flag and ask for help for this because they all came running. And uh, just to honor, uh, to honor a man like Johnny Kilbane, um, Norris Brothers, uh, PJ, PJ Kilbane Masonry, the proud men and women of the iron workers, the bricklayers, and the laborers, uh, just so, so proud to be part of this, this event. I can't believe it's 10 years, Rowan. I, I, I hope I hope we're not at the end of that toilet roll, uh, but uh, you know. But uh, to, to honor your work, our, our people, they, they bring their kids here now. They they, they, they show them what their parents did, and uh, I, I never come down to this neighborhood without taking a left off of 75th, six, 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 and then come down this way and then back up, maybe to a watering hole down the street. <laughs> But I make sure I, I, I make sure I uh, travel this, this great road and uh, to, to honor your work and everybody that was involved in that. So thanks, thanks to everybody. Thanks, Margaret. This was the part of the program where I was going to acknowledge Jerry Quinn, but somebody's already done it for me. But I just want to point out most everything good that happens Irish in Cleveland happens with the promotion and support of Jerry Quinn. It's a, more than appropriate to get a second recognition than on the phone. Finally, uh, you know, the Irish American Archives Society is a living, breathing, continuing uh, entity. Um, our original members, Tom Campbell, uh, Mary Helen Kelly is sort of a secretary, uh, Tom Lynch and uh, who am I leaving out here? Judge Fran Talty, of course, and the Talty family, Jim Conway and the Conways. Um, basically, I'm very proud of my immediate forebears and leaders, Jim Brennan and Tom Scanlon, who regretfully can't be... Oh, I'm going to mention, for instance, the, the current people who have been longtime board members. Meg McGarry, for one. Uh, Ray Dahl is here. I may skip somebody, but the point is we're a continuing organization. We've actually recently doubled the size of our board and increased its, decreased its average age by something closer to half mine. <laughs> um, and it's really important, as you know, 
celebrating the centennial was just a one-off, allegedly. And then Jack Kale and Tom Scanlon got to work, and suddenly it's a $300,000 sculpture project with a world-renowned sculptor. And Pat Murphy calls us and says, the parade is 150 years old, and of course, Margaret being Margaret, no, it isn't, it's 175 years old. So then we did this wonderful book, which is probably one of the best histories of any ethnic community in Cleveland, one of the best histories of a community anywhere in the United States. And that itself propelled us to where we are now, where a $175 million public transportation construction project now includes up to, we always say, hope it gets to $9 million in park, public park improvements. They recognize the heritage of the Irish who lived on that hillside. And as Margaret's research always helps us do, the very important Hungarians and even African Americans who came later to keep that neighborhood alive until there was no more. But that Cleveland will have a world-class waterfront park that recognizes the role of the Irish in building this town. It's pretty important. So we've got a lot of work ahead. Tom Scanlon, if he was here, would say, don't forget to ask for money. <laughs> now, you may not have it in your own pocket today or even tomorrow, but you may know somebody who does. And we still have funds to raise to make everything that Irish Town Bend Park should be uh, a reality. So without further ado, I give you the soul and spirit, and more importantly, the academic research and never sleep person for the Irish American Archives Society, Margaret Lynch. I really am just going to say, uh, well, thanks for everyone for being here, supporting it then and now. Um, thank you, Matt, uh, and all the people who are so important um, to the uh, sculpture. And um, Tom mentioned Jack Kale. He uh, catalyzed our fundraising, um, and we're so sorry that, um, you know, he's not with us today. Uh, but he was very important too, and uh, I think it was he cast the deciding vote on what kind of sculpture it was going to be at the end of the day. Um, so, but with the help of all kinds of community people, um, we want to thank the help of Land Studio who helped facilitate that discussion now and is facilitating the Irish Town Band. So now it's time to, some of you are itching to go to the Browns game, so that's great. But um, if you're not and would like to walk over to the sculpture, our, we couldn't set up a microphone there, but um, we don't want the sculpture not to be a part of this celebration. So if you'd like to join us over by the sculpture, um, Dan Hansen is going to take some photographs of uh, the assembled crowd with Rowan Gillespie and our Matt and Kevin and Terry. So thank you so much for being here, and meet us over there at the sculpture. You know, you know, Tom, you're picking up my mistake in the whole thing, that I wrote the word my twice. <laughs> All right, you ready? Look, at a big Look this way, here we go. One, two, three. Okay. And we're showing the sculpture documentary at 2 p.m.